Okay, so cool. today we are going to be reading to you Love no Dads for kids. kids by Bob Goff. And the story today, mm-hmm. it is page, no. four, well, chapter 14, No Manners Night. Do you have people in your life who try to teach you good table manners? Maybe your parents will remind you to chew with your mouth closed during dinner or keep your elbows off the table or say off the table and say please and thank you. These are great <coughs> things to learn. Who knows? You might be the president someday and you wouldn't want to put your feet on the table by mistake. Knowing good manners is important, but sometimes it gets a little boring to practice good manners all the time. So I made it do with my kids. If they could remember the the table manners for a whole week, we would have no manners night. We look at our calendar and so good to be able to practice to be our best manners. Then we watched and waited as the date the date got closer. The week finally arrived, and do you know what happened? Our kids had terrific manners. They said the table with nice forks and spoons on the correct sides. of the plates and the boys pulled the girls chairs. No one even bought. They did great. No man was never done. Sweet Maria and I slopped the sloppy sloppy Joe's and and spaghetti. And jello, and we ate of it, all of it, with no manners. Food flew everywhere. Sloppy, sloppy joes were popped on heads. Spaghetti was stuck to, to the ceiling. Jello covered the chairs. Bubbles were blown, and milk. Folks will use the drumsticks, and yes, each kid worked at the table a lot. It was awesome. A couple years later, we received an invitation to a different kind of dinner. When the kids wrote letters to different world leaders, one of the responses was from a real prince. He lived with his wife, who was a princess in the country that was named after the the family. The prince and princess had children of their own, and they were princes and princesses too. And the prince and princess invited our family over for dinner at the house, which we we secretly hoped we would be in a castle, even though the family lived far away across the ocean. We went... Phoebe's turn. It turned out that the prince and his family didn't actually live in a castle, but their dining room table was very fancy, the kind you would expect a prince and princess to eat their dinner. The table was very long and had wooden legs with carved claw feet on them. Dozens of sparkly glasses lined the top of the table. Candles, perhaps. Every candle ever made glowing brightly all around the room. Loads of fancy silverware were placed at every seat. The princess pushed a button by her plate, and a butler arrived with the food. This is great, I thought to myself. I've been practicing our manners for just this kind of thing. One of my kids, Adam, will rename 
Prince tried to cut his chicken, but instead of cutting it, he accidentally launched it off his spike like a hockey puck and sent it flying across the table and landed with a thud right by the prince's plate. There was a long moan of seven seconds. There, we were all horrified and wondered if the prince's country would think we just attacked it with a piece of chicken. The prince stared at the chicken by his plate. Then he looked up and hung a smile spread across his face. He lifted up his fork, positioned it behind, beside the p piece of chicken he asked the fork, Is this a game you play in your country? Shall I launch it back to you? It was no manners night all over again. Only this time it was the royal family edition. What started as a fa as a fancy serious dinner became a room full of laughter and great conversations about life and relationships, and we made some wonderful new friends. Some something our family was learning over the years is that whenever you are having good manners night or no manners night, make. Making time to sit at a table with new and old friends is important. It's something Jesus spent a lot of time doing. In fact, did you know that Jesus had his own kind of new manners night? He invited his friends to dinner one evening, and before the dinner started, Jesus got out a bowl of water and a towel, started washing his disciples' feet. In those days, his this broke all kinds of rules about manners because it was the only it was only polite for servants to wash people's feet. The disciples were shocked. Jesus was a prince who had a lot in common with the with the prince we met in our trip. On our trip, he knew that loving people sometimes included welcoming their silly manners, flying chicken, and dirty feet at your table. After Jesus went back to heaven, his friends continued to meet around tables just like the one you probably eat have at home. They broke bread together, which means they made sure everyone got a piece. They shared everything they owned with each other. Isn't that neat? Jesus invites us to our tables every night to do the same. When we gather together with our people, sometimes they break ru the rules often, often, often us or hurt our feelings. But do you know what Jesus does when that happens? He invites them back to the table all over again. And we get to invite them back too. Because after all, what Jesus really wants most from us isn't our best manners. He wants us to be good friends with him and good friends with one another. Showing love in the ways that break all the normal rules. What do you think? It, it tells us about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. And, like, they did the opposite as manners. They did no manners at the princess' palace. Because we, the, we, the, we the key in the story is not necessarily to have the best manners, but it's to share time with other people. And to show them love by serving them. Right? Yeah. You say good morning to everybody. Good morning. Hope you have a great week today. And We're, starting this starting today. We don't pajamas. Oh, thank you. Okay. Say goodbye. Bye.